Shraddha Burkunde and I'm a science communicator at Isa Pune. During my integrated masters, I studied and explored fossils for a semester, summer and my fifth year thesis project. And I studied its intersection with biology, which is called paleobiology. But what intrigued me the most were these simple questions like what is the likelihood of finding a fossil at the place that I'm standing right now? To dig deeper into such curiosities, let's talk to an expert in paleobiology. Hi Devpriya, thank you for joining us today. Hi. So, do we randomly look for fossils in rock sections? If not, what is the method to go about it? Well, the answer to that would be pretty low if you just randomly go to a place and try to look for fossils. Fossils are remnants of ancient organisms and they do not get preserved everywhere and anywhere. Specifically, we are finding them in rocks that have formed in relatively low temperature and pressure. We call them sedimentary rocks. So you can only expect to find fossils in sedimentary rocks in general. So the first challenge is to go to places where there are good sedimentary rocks. Not all the sedimentary rocks are going to give you fossils, but other kinds of rocks such as igneous rocks and metamorphic rocks, they are never going to give you fossils. So our first job is to look at geologic map which tells us how the rocks are distributed in a particular place. So we need to study the geology to look for fossils. Yes. Also, we usually see these illustrations of fossils buried deep underground. So in order to excavate these fossils, do we always have to dig deeper? No, it is not always the case. Well, it is true to some extent that if the fossils are uh, not buried or in other words if the life forms the ancient creatures were never buried they are never going to get preserved but once buried once they get preserved these rocks can be uh, uplifted and brought to the surficial level so not always you have to dig deep and sometimes uh, this digging can be done by natural processes such as rivers. The rivers can cut through rocks exposing older rocks and some of these older rocks can have fossils. So in that case you don't even have to dig. You simply have to locate those areas where things are exposed at the level of the ground and you simply are going to walk on those grounds where the fossils are exposed. So if we find fossils in a rock section, is it more likely to find more uh, fossils in the same or surrounding outcrops? Yes, we try to find areas which qualify all these things such as they have sedimentary rocks and depending on what kind of fossils I'm interested in, uh, I try to look at that sort of sedimentary rock. Just to give you an example, let's say I'm interested in the ancient uh, marine organisms, creatures that lived in the sea. In that case, I would try to look at the sedimentary rocks which form underwater. And to locate those, I will again look at the geologic map and try to find out which are the places where these uh, limestones or shales are uh, predominantly there and then once we go there uh, often we try to look for these river cut sections which exposed older rocks and uh, track some of these things to find out some fossils once we found one fossil uh, we try to locate nearby areas and try to search more thoroughly to check for fossils you mentioned marine fossils the, the first thought that comes to the mind is you would need to dive deep to find this ancient floor and then excavate fossils from it. Is that how it's done? It's a very interesting question and the answer is always no. Uh, in fact, 
Very rarely marine sea floor are preserved under the ocean of today. In fact, most of the ocean floor are not that old and majority of the marine fossils um, as part of the marine sea floor are often preserved in the land. So they have been uplifted and now they are part of the land record and we find them. And for that, we don't really have to dive down in the water. In fact, we can walk on the ocean floor just by walking on the fossilized um, ocean floor that we find on the land. For these marine fossils, which can be found on the surface, can you uh, quote an Indian example for it? Maybe a location where these are more likely to be found? Well, there are many, but uh, I would uh, like to talk about one where we go almost regularly and that is in the western part of India, in Gujarat, there is a place called the Kutch and in Kutch, you do find marine fossils um, on the land and in fact, uh, many of these places, they show a variety of marine organism fossils of different ages in this barren land of Kutch. So it was once upon a time, it was a shallow sea floor where uh, it was thriving with life and now we only have these rocks full of life. How do we recognize that the part of the rock that we see was part of the sea floor once? Well, the fossils are really helpful in that. So I can actually show you a rock. This is a rock and uh, I think from a distance it looks quite nondescript. But if you actually look at the sediments, the sediments look very similar to the sediments that you find in today's seafloor. So if you compare the sediments that you find from today's seafloor and look at this rock, uh, you are going to see that they are uh, made up of same sediments. On top of that, you also get to see organisms like that. So these are marine uh, seashells fossils of seashells and these seashells are clear indication that this was underneath the seawater at some point of time. Also is Kutch the only place in India where you would find marine fossils? So we do find quite a bit of marine fossils all over India. In fact, uh, long ago there was an ocean at the northern part of India and it used to be called Tethys and this remnant of this Tethian uh, ocean and the creatures which lived on the ocean floor are found in the northern part of India where we find the Himalayas today. The rocks of Himalayas, a significant portion of the rocks of Himalayas are actually marine rocks and they do contain a diverse amount of fossils. Similarly, if we look at the southern part of India, there are places in Kerala, in Tamil Nadu, where we do find uh, quite a bit of uh, sea fossils um, and marine rocks. But my interest in Kutch is because of a completely different reason. You see, in Earth and climate science, uh, especially when we are talking about geological uh, experiments, Rarely do we get a chance to do an experiment. Unlike other uh, disciplines, here the experiment has already been done and we are looking at the outcome in order to understand what went on during the vast span of time. Now, the Kutch actually gives us a natural experiment where a seaway changed its course. So if you go back in time, there was a time when the Tethian Sea, starting from the northern part of India, went all the way to Mediterranean. It was a continuous seaway. So if one is to take a boat and sail towards the west, he or she could actually go all the way to Mediterranean without taking a break. But then something changed. The Arabian Peninsula where we see it, it moved and finally we see a land 
which emerged and connecting Africa, Arabian Peninsula and the Europe. And during this time, the Mediterranean got disconnected from the water body, what we call the Arabian Sea. Now the question is, if you want to know what happens to marine organisms when you change the seaway, what happens if you disconnect them? What happens if they are segregated? All of these questions can be addressed by looking at the fossil record of before and after this formation of this land bridge as it's called. When you say studying fossils for research purposes, I imagine it's something continuous um, like a record and not isolated specimen. So can you elaborate a little on that? Yes, um, I think um, many of the cases we simply look at it as from a collector's point of view where we look at a nice little tiny fossil and we get excited. But in order to use them as data points, we need a lot of them. And what we try to go for is a place where there is a sequential arrangement of these fossils and we collect it sequentially to look at how groups changed over time especially in this uh, specific time when seaway have closed um, and therefore Kutch is another very nice place because it has this sequential preservation of fossils ranging uh, from somewhere around 25 million years to all the way 15 million years which is relevant for addressing this particular question uh, when the land bridge happened and the seaway got disconnected all of these things happened around 19 million years ago so it's it gives us the flexibility to check how the fauna was before 19 million years ago and after 19 million years ago and uh, in order to do that we need to collect a lot of specimens and um, along with my students I go there every year to collect specimens and finally to reconstruct what is called a stratigraphy and to see how things are changing with time although that time has long passed. As in order I understand the curiosity to study fossils but why explore and study fossils so extensively? What are the possibilities of studying them? I think the understanding that the fossils provide us is a valuable one. Very importantly because many of the changes that uh, the biology experiences are in the larger time scale or in time scale larger than human time scale and there is no way we can record it or we can understand it uh, how a group evolves how a group changes uh, when the change is taking place in really large time scale and the only way to study it is to look back uh, and look at the fossil record because those are the testaments of how groups changed in response to the environmental change and with the modern perspective of imminent environmental changes and uh, you know the changes in climate it becomes even more critical to understand how groups changed as a response to the changes in their environment. So one way to think about it is it's essential to look back in order to understand our present and to plan for the future. So studying the past helps us predict the future scenarios. Absolutely, that is the theme for conservation paleobiology. Thank you Devpriya for your time and addressing some of our curiosities about fossils. We have done another hour long video addressing more questions and other aspects of studying fossils. So you can find it in the description box with the title Knowing Long Lost Life Through Fossils. The link is provided in the description box. Thank you. Wish you a happy science day.